Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us just before lunch. Um, I hope you, you heard a little bit about HOT in the last two presentations. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit more for those of you who haven't been keeping track of what we've been doing the past couple of years. Just a quick update on some of the activities um, and some of the new programs that we have uh, from the past year. And then also, we're going to do a little demo of some of our newest tools. And one of those is called Map Campaigner. So when we think about, I'm going to talk a little bit about the concept of mapping campaigns. When we think about campaigns over the years, um, there's many different types of mapping campaigns that have been run. So this, is, uh, this was one of my favorites, the Big Baseball Project 2011. So this was all about locating and mapping baseball diamonds throughout the US. Um, I believe this was organized by Harry Wood, and there were something like 14,000 edits made. Um, very specific, very specific mapping project. Here's another one, wheelmap.org. So this is all about mapping accessibility, so physical accessibility to buildings, things like uh, is a bu building wheelchair accessible. Uh, a recent one from the past year or so has been uh, tagging in support of women and girls. And this is mapping, map, mapping features uh, around us that might have a particular relevance to, to women, uh, young women and girls. And these are it really could be anything from um, educational facilities to women's health facilities, et cetera. Uh, if you look at, at the OpenStreetMap wiki under mapping projects, you'll see there's this huge variety of things. And you, these were just a few examples. There's other projects around uh, mapping water supply, mapping uh, infrastructure. Um, the list goes on and on. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about what HOT is and what's HOT's specific interest in mapping campaigns. We, you might know us for our work around disaster mapping. So since the Haiti earthquake in 2011, we've been leading these lar very large-scale disaster and crisis rapid response activations. We've had more than 45,000 uh, contributors, many of you in the room who've worked with us over the years, to rapidly to respond to a crisis uh, on a, sort of a, on a rapid uh, rapid onset basis. Something we've been working on since 2015 is the Missing Maps Project. And this is really uh, to get out there before crisis in map areas around the world that are, have particular vulnerabilities. Uh, and this is just one of those projects which Rachel mentioned earlier. This is mapping for malaria elimination. Um, really incredible project. We worked in uh, with Digital Globe on this one, and it was, I believe, in nine countries covering more than half a million square kilometers on uh, pretty close to five million buildings mapped. So that's the remote mapping work that we're doing, but a big priority for HOT over the past year, um, really over the past uh, seven years since our founding, has been to support and grow OSM communities around the world. We realize that OSM communities are just core um, to, to what we do, and we launched a new program this year called the Microgrants Program. This is supporting nine communities around the world with the basics that they need to get started, sort of seed funding, uh, so they can undertake mapping projects. And this was for things like equipment, training, to hold mapathons. Uh, and these are the nine communities here. So Tanzania, DRC, Niger, Zambia, Sierra Leone, Mozambique, Bangladesh, Colombia, Mongolia. As we move into 2018, uh, we're really fortunate to have support from NetHope uh, via the Google Foundation or Google.org. And this is um, providing, we'll provide $120,000 of equipment to OSM communities around the world. Um, including phones, GPS devices, laptops, printers, um, all the basic sort of hardware that somebody would need in order to map. Another priority for us is um, supporting OSM communities on mapping campaigns on the ground. So actually working on the ground doing what some people call field data collection, field mapping or on the ground mapping uh, continues to be really critical for us. So, we're doing this at very large scale also in some of the world's most difficult contexts. Uh, context. So right now, working in Jakarta, Indonesia, this is the second largest metropolitan area in the world, mapping all the critical infrastructure across the entire city. Uh, in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, this is Africa's uh, fastest growing city, 
and we're working with a team of more than 300 students right now um, to cover the entire city and map critical infrastructure, especially uh, drainage infrastructure, uh, which is of critical importance during the rainy season when Dar es Salaam is experiencing heavy flooding. So each of these campaigns is capturing different types of data attributes. Um, another one, um, and this is something we started working on in the past year, the South Sudanese refugee crisis in northern Uganda. Um, there's, there are now over one million South Sudanese refugees in the northern part of the country. And we're working to map uh, the settlements where they're relocating. And these are some of the types of features we're collecting are things like um, drainage, uh, latrines, water, access to water and water points. And it's not only mapping the location of these things, but mapping very specific attributes. So for example, we might know that there's a latrine in this location, but is it well lighted? Is it accessible to women? Is it, is it safe at night? So these are all the types of um, features and attributes that we're capturing. So this is, this is a photo from just one of the settlements. There's over a dozen settlements in northern Uganda. Uh, Palarinya, this is where over 6,000 shelters have been set up. So when we think about a mapping campaign and organizing these really large scale efforts, uh, it can be incredibly complex just due to the logistics involved, um, getting, our, getting our teams out there, getting volunteers involved, um, making sure people are collecting the data that, that we want to collect and that's, that's meaningful. So when we talk about a mapping campaign, it, it generally has specific characteristics. So number one, we want to collect geospatial data for a specific purpose. Uh, there's a defined set of features involved and attributes that we want to collect a defined area of interest, ge geographical area. It's likely time bound, so we want to complete it in a, say a month or three months or six months time. And it requires a pool of people out there on the ground to actually collect the data. So this can either be a tightly managed team of trained, highly trained staff people, it could also be volunteers, it could be a mix of the two. So you saw a few of the challenges that we were presented with in, in some difficult places like Northern Uganda. Another question that we were asked recently by one of our partners is, how could we crowdsource the location and very specific attributes for every school in Colombia? And it sounds like a really, it sounds like something we should have already or should be able to do really easily. Um, but when you get down to it, it's really difficult because of the, um, many of the locations are quite inaccessible um, and it, just the transport and logistics is difficult and quite costly to actually deploy people throughout the country to collect this data. So I'll talk a little bit about how some of the tools we're developing address these challenges. Um, when we're planning a, on, an on the ground mapping project, these are some of the common ingredients. So typically um, the first step is to figure out what do we want to map and why do we want to map it. Um, determining the area of interest, so where are we working. Defining the data model, so the types of data that we'll be collecting selecting the imagery. So um, sometimes you can collect part of the data remotely. So for example, you can collect building footprints remotely before you send your team out on the ground to collect more detail on those buildings. Um, you would then set up software, uh, set up your data collection software. So we use Open Map Kit quite frequently. We use maps.me, OSM Tracker, a number of other mobile-based tools to do data collection. Um, you'd get out there and collect the data um, using those mobile devices, using GPS devices. And then um, when you're back at your desk, do some quality assurance to validate the quality of that data. And that can be done in a number of tools. We, we use JOSM, we also use OSM CHA and, and a number of other tools to help with that data um, validation. So lots, lots of stuff here, really um, some basic steps, but there's a lot of intricacies behind this. Um, one of the tools that we use for the remote mapping piece, and I just wanted to, to call this out in particular, is the tasking manager. Um, you've seen some screenshots already from earlier today. This is our new version, version three. It's now live at tasks.hotosm.org. Uh, and this is what we're using to do the remote portion of the mapping um, using satellite imagery. So if you haven't seen the new version, please check it out. We'd love to hear your feedback, whether you love it or hate it. Uh, we need to know uh, how we can continue to get better. So please, please check it out. I mentioned a few of the challenges already about planning and organizing these really large scale mapping campaigns on the ground. 
So number one, just getting around. It's really expensive and complicated to get people to very remote areas, especially in areas where we might not have paved roads or the roads are flooded for half of the year and things like that. Um, barriers to entry. Some of our data collection tools are still too complicated for the everyday user to use, so they still require training. Um, we'd like to get to the point where literally, literally anybody can contribute, not just, we've made the remote mapping process really easy, but we have a lot of work to do on the, on the, on the field-based data collection and making tools that anyone can um, sort of contribute their local knowledge of the places they live um, with, with zero training or with zero barriers to entry. Uh, organizing these large-scale campaigns. So it's hard to know right now. You need to use, there's ways to do it, but you need to use many different tools to figure out who's contributing to a mapping campaign, uh, where are they doing it, what areas have been fully covered uh, or not covered, uh, where are the gaps in data, and then finally, data quality. It's hard to define, um, uh, sorry, it's easy to define what data you want to collect, but it's really hard to monitor uh, as people are out there on the ground collecting that data, what's the status of that data collection? Um, and it's hard to incentivize high quality contributions, so it's hard to monitor um, specifically what each person or each uh, volunteer mapper is contributing. And it's not easy to see via one place uh, what some of the data gaps are or, or issues are. And this is really where we get to uh, the development of a new tool called Map Campaigner. So I'm going to ask my colleague, Nate Smith, to come up. So Nate uh, was one of our technical project managers who really helped to conceptualize and envision what the tool would look like. Um, Nate's now also taken over as HOT's Director of Technology Innovation. So um, you can also, if you have any questions about any of our tech tools, Nate's the guy to talk to. So I'm going to pass it off to him. Uh, two, for, two for the price of one. Thanks. All right. So we're going to do a live demo at a conference, so bear with me. Also, if you want to go to, I've never uh, told people this, if you, uh, this many people all at once, go to campaigns.hotosm.org. We'll see if it actually uh, crashes everything. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I'm going to do this looking backwards. Um, so when you go to uh, campaigns hotoism.org, you're going to see a landing page uh, and see the active campaigns that are happening right now. Um, you know, if you, uh, it should be fairly optimized for mobile, and so if you could click on a place like, let's say I want to go to, uh, I'm organizing a uh, campaign, I want to collect restaurants and, campaign, uh, and cafes in Ottawa. And so what I can do is set up an AOI uh, and uh, define the, the things that I want to collect. Um, and what you'll see is then you'll be given a dashboard and you start to monitor that. Let me, let me back up really quick and say, and walk you through that process. Oh, let me log in. I should have done this earlier. Uh oh. I'm going to skip that, actually, because I don't know uh, my passwords on my uh, last pass. So <laughs> we're going to skip this. Um, uh, let me, le so, when you, so let's say you've, uh, you've created a campaign, and so you have your, you want to sign in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to walk through the, the process because, yeah. We planned this last minute, so sorry about this. Hit never. And then grant access, yeah. All right, we're logged in. So let's say we're planning a, a campaign here in Boulder. And we want to map cafes, because we want to find some good coffee, but we want to make sure that all the cafes in Boulder have the right attributes that we're looking for. So I, set a, uh, I can set a, uh, a start date, um, and uh, so I'm going to set, uh, we started this yesterday, 
and we're going to go till the end of the year um, because it might take a little while for us to, to do this. I'm going to give a little description. And, we're, and uh, so, uh, so we, we give a little details, metadata, and now I want to define what I want to collect. So I'm going to uh, select some predefined categories. So one of these is, is uh, cafes. And what you'll see is that you'll, uh, we, um, we, we're pre predefining not just cafe, uh, amenity equals cafe, but a number of other attributes that really help you know, uh, track all the attributes that we want to collect. I'm, for the purposes of this demo, I'm only going to be looking at the name, make sure that every cafe uh, in Boulder has uh, a name and managers. I'm going to put my name as well here. Add to manager so we um, so multiple people can oversee this campaign. And then next, so what I'm going to do is create a uh, define the area of interest that I want to track. Go to Boulder. Okay, great. And then what I'm going to do is just a small square kind of around around here. What's interesting here is what uh, Tyler was talking about, uh, not, not just tracking uh, what's happening in an area, but also tracking the coverage of an area. I'm going to come back to this campaign setup because I want to show one uh, example of, so instead of defining one area they're tracking, let's say we want to uh, split up an area uh, into three different teams. So team one, or is team three, uh, has been assigned to a, a certain section in downtown Ottawa. Uh, team two uh, is, is a middle section. They're actually incomplete yet. Or team three, or team one, which got started a month ago, um, is already complete. And so we, we can define the status of w what those teams are doing and, and the progress of that. And that, that helps show give us a sense on, okay, what are the areas covered um, and, and a, a, a across a campaign. For, for this demo, I'm just doing one area, um, but that we can, we can come back to that. I'm going to define the name. T-U-S. And I'm going to submit, and it's going to start generating my, my campaign. So I got a dashboard, and we can see that there's 64 cafes in this area, and what, what's, what we've been, uh, a big thing about quality that we've been thinking about has been uh, attribute completeness. So not just that a cafe exists, but there's other attributes about that cafe. Opening time, uh, what, what kind of other cuisine do they serve? Uh, here, for this campaign, I just said uh, name. And so what you'll see is a percentage of completeness for each feature in this area. Uh, from zero to 100%. You can see these are all green because they all have at least a name. Um, so we're, we're getting a sense, okay, great. This is a, a, a pretty good uh, completeness. Although it says 0%, that's, that's an error. Um, and then uh, over the past month, uh, two people have engaged and one of those persons actually is in, in the, hopefully he's in the room. Jennings, are you in the room? Yes. <laughs> So you can see that, okay, you've, you've been a part of this campaign already. <laughs> uh, and then the last part is, in many of, um, like, so the, in the way that we design this has been really through a lot of um, input and uh, testing with our, um, our field projects. Um, so many of our uh, uh, project managers based in Tanzania, Uganda, Indonesia have given a lot of feedback. And a, and a big point of this is being able to monitor Kind of what are what are we calling errors or completeness errors, um, and then being able to follow up with those uh, the, the editors uh, or be able to download a JSON file of all the errors and make some uh, make a bulk edit and, uh, and update those um, to to fix those um, errors. And so we're tracking everything from the completeness stuff, but also from naming issues. We can we can do a lot of things with uh, with some cha. We can do a lot of our own custom. Uh, kind of tracking is, did things get capitalized right? Are there spelling mistakes? Um, there's a lot of ways that we can extend that. Um, and right now we're really only looking at completeness. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a quick, um, and so if you're looking at it on mobile and you have maps.me installed, um, you'll, you'll be able to open up uh, maps.me right away, start contributing 
Uh, we're going to be extending some of the features on that, be able to open up uh, maps.me with your bounding box. Um, you can see where this could go is like, okay, maybe I could be already be assigned to this, um, and I know what area that I need to edit. Uh, I know what edit, uh, attributes I need to contribute uh, to this campaign. Um, and I think there's, some, there's a lot of potential, and we're only uh, scratching the surface uh, with this first version. Uh, we haven't launched it yet. We've, been, uh, we've kind of been soft launched this internally with our projects, um, and are going to be starting to do some, some training around this. And, uh, uh, but over the next month, uh, and you'll, be, you'll be hearing more. And, and, um, and so if you have feedback, join us online. Um, and, or talk to me over the next day. Uh, we can do more. I can do more demos. I can get into the guts of this as well, and we can talk more about it. So, thank you. All right. Thanks, Nate.